Hi, I'm Melanie Gowen. I am a faculty member in the History Department. And my position uh, really focuses on undergraduate education. I teach a lot of the large lecture classes for the History Department and have been doing so for the last six years. And having gone through that process of learning how to teach these classes, still working on how I teach those um, uh, and, and the methods I use, I have just a few lessons that I've learned along the way that I would like to share. Um, the first thing that when people ask me or say they're teaching large lectures for the first time, my first piece of advice is always sweat the small stuff. All the little tiny details that you can let slide or, you know, kind of finesse as you go through a semester in a smaller class, you cannot do that well in a large lecture course. I usually have about 300 students any little piece of uncertainty is going to result in probably 300 questions. Um, you cannot change course. You can't leave things up in the air at the beginning of the semester. You want to plan it out to the nth degree. Cross every I, uh, cross every T, dot every I. And make sure your TAs are always aware of every detail as well, because if people are not on the same page, you will have mass chaos on your hands. It's kind of like having to turn around a sailboat in a small class. You can do that pretty easily. You can pivot in a large lecture class. It's going to be very tough to do so. So any advanced preparation you can do at the beginning of the semester, think through every contingency, really nail it all down at the beginning, and you will be glad you did so. My second piece of advice, um, or second lesson that I've learned, is to build in accountability into my uh, large lecture courses. In those classes, we usually have freshmen and sophomores. They are getting used to college life. They are learning to succeed in college classes, and they often let little details slide that we know are very important to student success. Reading textbooks, coming to class, um, and who can blame them when they're trying to balance a thousand details and multitask? They, they prioritize things and they often prioritize things that have points attached to them. So I have learned that I attach points to some of those behind the scenes activities they need to be doing to be successful. One thing I do is I attach points to attendance. Now, I don't do that just for showing up and breathing. They don't get credit just for being in the room. I uh, plan questions. I, I uh, will post um, some kind of query during the class period, sometimes more than once. Um, it varies from class period to class period. But I will, in some way, make sure they're there through asking a question. Now, the question does more for me than just tell me if students are there. I use it in other ways as well. I use it to check how well they're grasping the material. I use it to just survey them, get their opinion on things, show that what we're talking about matters in their own lives and has a connection. I think that helps to create a sense of community when I can ask them about their own lives. Sometimes I will use it to give them a voice in the course. And I often, if there's a subject where I could give a couple different examples to illustrate different anecdotes, I'll let the students pick what they most want to hear about. So I do this in particular in a general history survey when we get to World War II. I give them a couple options. I could talk about Dr. Seuss's role in the war. I could talk about spam, the canned lunch meat, and how that plays into the war effort. Or we can talk about the role of war dogs and, and the contributions they made. And so I let students vote. I let them pick what we're going to talk about the next day. Uh, the last couple of semesters, it's always been dogs. They really like to uh, learn about uh, uh, pets and their role in the war. And then I turn around and I ask them, would you be willing to do this with your own pet? So, so I, I can use these questions on several different levels there. I also build in accountability with homework, making sure that students are doing the reading. They want to feel like they, that that's worthwhile, a worthwhile use of their time. So I attach points to those readings. Ten homework questions go with every reading assignment. I run it through Canvas. 
It's very easy to grade. It doesn't require anything more of the TAs, which is very important, but students feel like they get a payoff for doing the reading. The third lesson I've learned, and this is something that I learned from one of my colleagues, Dr. Mark Summers, you need to give students room to mess up. Because a lot of them are freshmen and sophomores, they're getting used to this whole college thing. And often they are not uh, familiar with our discipline before they walk in our classroom doors. And so we're teaching them new methodologies. We're teaching them new ways to think. And they're not always going to get that immediately. So in my courses, everything builds. The point values build as we go through the semester. Exam one is worth 10% of the grade. Very low stakes. So if they they completely screw it up, that's not going to tank their grade for the semester. Second exam, 15%. Third exam is worth 20%. Writing assignments, similarly, I give them three very short writing assignments early in the semester and only will count two of those scores. I drop the third. So that gives them a chance to totally miss the mark and still come back and recover from that. So those are a few things I've found helpful as I've been in this process of teaching large lecture classes. Um, I've also learned that you're not going to get it exactly right the first, second, third, or even fourth times. Each time I do this, I learn a little along the way, and, and it's good to remind ourselves of that.